Welcome to the channel folks, Mr. Age here for my review of Stranger Things Season 3. Yes, that's right, I have binged it. I have watched it all. Uh, I watched it across the span of about three or four days. Now, what I will say from the outset is we'll talk non-spoilers, then get into some light spoilers. But straight from the top, it's, it's, it's much of the same, to be perfectly honest. Um, I enjoyed this season but I definitely have my issues with it. Like, really do have my issues with this season. Uh, and unfortunately, Stranger Things has become a sign of the times, and it's a real shame. So let's just touch on all of the technical aspects first and foremost. It's great. It's really, really good. What the Duffer Brothers are able to do with a presumably a modest budget, modest to large, but, you know, modest nonetheless, especially for TV, is astounding. The cinematography is great. It all looks awesome. The locations which they set up, the set design, the props, everything looks great. And it really captures the spirit of the 80s uh, in this season. It really is, yeah, they, they really do nail it. The mall and how people function in malls, and because obviously part of this season is the Star Court Mall. Which we'll touch on in spoilers, but yeah, it looks absolutely solid. And in terms of everyone and their roles, their kind of acting ability, their castings, it's all fine. The child actors have developed. They haven't necessarily improved massively, but they've developed. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown is good. She's, you know, a, a fine child actor. She's not a good actor, but she's a fine child actor uh, and everything moves nicely it's all very very good in terms of technical perspective lighting cinematography uh, the cg was a little bit off in parts but they also in universe build a reason for the cg being off obviously these budgets don't have you know they're not huge budgets so for the cg parts there was some wonky and off coloring and texturing but they build an in-universe reason for that which I'll touch on in spoilers, but if you've if you've seen it, you'll know what I mean. So you know exactly what I'm referring to. Now standouts here, Winona Ryder. I actually really do like Winona Ryder, uh, despite her you know personal life and personal kind of politics and things like that. And the same with David Harbour. David Harbour was fine in this, but he really did take a step back from season two. Um, I feel season two's David Harbour was a much more his character definitely went through more of an arc and it was undoubtedly a much, much better characterization of that character. Um, I don't really understand what happened between season two and season three. They, a lot of the characters seem to have had uh, brain aneurysms or suffered a very large brain hemorrhage uh, and a lot of them have had personality swaps, which we will have to touch on. So look, from the outset, I'll say this, if you were a fan of season one, you thought it dipped maybe in season two and, you know, it wasn't all that great, you'll probably prefer season three. It's more in line with season one, but it definitely has its issues. So I can recommend it, but I would encourage you probably to stay for the spoilers. Uh, like I said, there are, it's, it's pretty much more of the same. Uh, it doesn't really progress the story that far, unfortunately. There's a lot of filler and a lot of faffing around where characters don't do anything and it goes absolutely nowhere. And there's some strange subplots which I can agree that they are somewhat period accurate and there would be those things happening and I like the in-universe reasons for it. But in terms of the overall narrative and answering questions that people wanted to be answered, they pulled a Ryan Johnson basically. So let's stop with the non-spoilers now. We'll touch on spoilers because this is what, you know, what we all want to discuss and and to really get into the nitty-gritty of why this season is not particularly great, we have to touch on it. So here's your spoiler warning. Spoilers ahead. Tally-ho, let's get into spoilers. So personality swaps. All the men have become incompetent morons. David Harbour's characterization of Jim Hopper especially he is he's turned into quite literally a blithering idiot. And I don't know why. I really don't know why. If if there's any if there's any series which is very, very apparent 
uh, in running with the times and changing agendas as a result of the times. This is a great example of that. This is really a great example of that. The times that we live in, there are heavy agendas being pushed uh, and we want representation of strong women. I get that. That's absolutely fine. No issue with strong women. I do have an issue when the representation of strong women comes at the detriment of all male characters because that's not good representation. That's fucking stupid. Um, so all of the women are incredibly smart, incredibly strong, incredibly witty. They know exactly what to do. All of them. All of them do. And yet all of the boys and the men are played like chumps. Like they like they weren't even in the first and second seasons. Like they don't know anything about what's going on. It's very strange. Especially Jim Hopper. I think that's probably the most apparent. Jim Hopper went from, you know, it wasn't overly intelligent. He was a little bit emotionally damaged. But he wasn't a blithering idiot. He wasn't a moron. He wasn't a socially inept douchebag like he is in this. And I don't know why anyone approved this. Why did anyone think this was a good idea? Like I say, it's very, very apparent that Stranger Things is pushing uh, an agenda. And I don't mind strong female characters. They had Eleven, the strongest female character in the whole, in the whole series. But when you had Eleven, you didn't downtrod uh, or downtread every other male character. And that's the problem. That's the real issue. Is that in, like, again, just for example's sake, because we're talking spoilers. The, the Ahoy or, you know, Ice Cream Ahoy woman, right? The, uh, the employee, the colleague. Where, where Dustin's character is trying to figure out what the Russians are saying, she walks in spouts off a mouth about a bunch of other languages she can speak, which have absolutely no basis in Russian at all, and suddenly she can crack the code. What? Fine. All right, I could get that. But then it's really downright offensive when you have Winona Ryder's character and David Harbour's character having an interaction where she is quite literally babying him through what a heart-to-heart -heart is. He apparently doesn't know what a heart-to-heart -heart is. Is this real life? Like, what is going on? You know, and it's played for laughs, but again, when it's every single male character, it becomes an issue. It really becomes an issue because it becomes offensively obvious what they're trying to do. Uh, and it's, it's not good. It's not good at all, especially when we have the other seasons to compare it to. It wouldn't matter if it was straight from the outset. That's fine because you've got no comparison. You just go, oh, this is what this... This whole, you know, uh, series is about. It's about strong women downtreading men. That's fine. No one cares. But when you've had the characters, which are now morons, be, you know, somewhat comprehensive, somewhat intelligent, uh, being total idiots, then that's a problem because it's very, very apparent agenda. So, like I said, I liked this season. Nothing really happened. Nothing progressed, though. The Russian subplot was interesting to a degree. But like I said, he's... The Duffer Brothers have absolutely pulled a Ryan Johnson. We wanted some answers about the Upside Down. And we are no closer to getting them. At all. Eleven lost their powers at the end. That's fine. They've all moved away. That's fine. Uh, the Russians now have a Demogorgon. That's fine. But we don't know anything. We don't know, you know, the Mind Flare. We don't know anything about him. We don't know what it is. We absolutely know nothing. And that's a problem because they're only doing a few more seasons of this. We need some answers as we progress through it. So, unfortunately, it's kind of more of the same. I feel like they, the Duffer Brothers themselves really struck gold with the first season. Absolutely struck gold. I think it was fantastic. But it's gone f vastly downhill. Uh, and I'm yeah, quickly losing my interest in it. Especially, like I said, when all the men are essentially you know, brain dead. And again, it's not an overstatement. They are essentially brain dead in this season. It's really, really bad. So I hand it on over to you. What do you think? Let me know down below. And in terms of the CGI and what I meant by the CGI being bad, but they inbuilt a universe reason for it. The textures, it was all gooey and really soft. And, um, you know, that's, that is to make it cheaper. 
but they, the good in-universe reason was, of course, it's all made from melted bodies. So I liked that. I thought it was fine, but it's definitely a mask for um, lower budget for the CG. So anyway, like I said, drop your thoughts down below. Did you notice what I noticed? Did you not? Do you care? Did you like this season? Drop them down below in the comment section. If you are new here, please do hit subscribe. And it's up to date on the world of pop culture and movie news. Crush the bell notification icon. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Mr. H. Take care.